Alright guys and girls, this is a long plane review for The Bells, The Bells, on the Amstrad CPC, released by Blaby Computer Games in 1986. Now, when I hear of a game being a hunchback clone, I'll definitely go and check it out. And despite the awful box art, here we are with The Bells. The official conversion of Hunchback from Ocean and Amsoft, whilst it has its nostalgic charm, really wasn't up to much, so I'm keen to check out a decent clone. We actually came across this one on the most recent Amstream. That's my weekly Amstrad CPC livestream every Friday, 9pm, cheap plug alert. <coughs> uh -huh. Anyway, because we were looking at the lowest scoring game reviews in Amstrad Action Magazine, and this was one of them. But... We actually kind of liked it and uh, thought the review score of 26% was kind of harsh. Uh, anyway, this was a budget game costing £1.99. The year previous in 1985, it was Mastertronic that had kickstarted the whole budget game market and many companies wanted to emulate and repeat their success. Blaby Computer Games was one of them. Unfortunately, pretty much all of Blaby's games were terrible, with the crowning turd being the legendarily bad Death Kick. Four of their eight games released on the Amstrad are within the top 35 lowest ever scoring games in the Amstrad Action Magazine review scores, and that's not including Death Kick, which was never reviewed. With the highest scoring of those being this one, The Bells, with a whopping 26% score. The other games in question, the three games in question, are Life Expectancy Zero, with a score of 23%, Ricochet, with an 18% score, and then lastly, Reckless Roger on 17%. To be honest, some of those scores aren't that fair. Reckless Roger, for example, is a basic jetpack clone that actually plays okay. Its biggest crime is that it's just deathly dull. The only decent game, perhaps, was Wriggler, a centipede clone that scored 76%, but even that wouldn't offer much longevity. Uh, the Bells itself, as I said, scored 26% in the February 1986 issue 5 of Amstrad Action. Uh, they mostly complained about the sluggish controls in a short review and rated the graphics at 30%, Sonics 39%, Grab Factor 22%, Stain Power 31%, with of course an overall AA rating of 26%. Anyway, enough um, rabbiting on, let's actually get the game booted up and we'll talk through the bells. So, the coders of this game were, I assume, two chaps called P.L. Thomas and B.M. Burroughs. And we'll see their names on the um, colourful but slightly crap loading screen here. Not much is known about them. Their only other Amstrad games were the aforementioned Reckless Roger, with that AA score of 17%, and one other game called REM, or Remote Excavation Module, which is a nicely presented uh, game and maybe their best work. However, it's still a bad Boulder Dash clone with terrible scrolling that will make your eyes hurt. Um, oh, anyway, here we are on the uh, title screen of The Bells, and we've got the Bell Ringers Hall of Fame for the high score table, and um, some sprites moving around rather jerkily. Mm, maybe not a good sign. Anyway, let's read the instructions. So, Quasimodo and Esmeralda were very much in love until an evil archbishop decided that Esmeralda was much too beautiful for the ugly hunchback. So he took Esmeralda and imprisoned her in his highest tower so that she could not see poor Hunchy. <laughs> Hunchy. Now, Quasimodo has set out to rescue Esmeralda. Can Hunchy overcome so many hazards? Only you can decide his fate. I wonder if this game was originally called Hunchy and they changed the name. Hmm. Uh, along uh, his way, Quasimodo will have to overcome many dangerous hazards, such as falling rocks, flaming pits, arrows, guards, bats and barrels, all of which will stop Quasimodo from rescuing Esmeralda. You are given a certain amount of time per screen as shown by a line of bells. If this reaches zero, poor Hunchy will be struck by lightning. At the end of each screen, you will be given a bonus for each bell remaining. There is also a super bonus which will be given if you complete five screens without losing a life. 
And here's the controls, ZX for left and right and M for jump. Or we can use a joystick. So there we go. I think we should kick things off on this long play. I call it a long play, but it's actually quite a short game to complete over 15 screens. And here we are on screen one. Uh, well, nice, bright and colorful. Um, but the sprites really do not move very well at all. Um, they're jumping forward like several pixels at a time at least. Almost about a half to two thirds of a sprite's width it's jumping along there. Uh, really doesn't look very smooth at all. However, one thing he does have over the Hunchback con official conversion is when he reaches the bell, he actually rings the bell and you get a little bell noise, which is actually quite nice. That's a nice little touch. Um, and actually, this is a lot more brighter than um, the Hunchback conversion as well, graf graphically wise. Um, okay, yep, yeah, the usual soldier, so soldiers with the swords to, to avoid. But the bells actually adds in some new things that wasn't present in the Hunchback game. And we get the super bonus there for completing five screens without losing a life. Just like in Hunchback, of course. Now, this is one of the hardest screens to complete. Jumping over this middle soldier, if you look when his sword comes down, it's when the arrow is passing over. So the key here is to be patient and wait a quite a long time before jumping and even then it's a squeeze look how tight that was that that is actually the hardest part of the entire game and we're only on screen six of 15 yikes um now we've got some birds to avoid uh, i don't remember birds being in hunchback so uh, this is a new addition um and I, I don't mind the sound effects, they're very basic and simple. I think Amsterdam Action were quite harsh in their review. I don't think the graphics deserve 30%. I don't think the Sonics deserve 39%. Nor do I think the Grab Factor deserves 22%. Um, uh, Hunchback games have always been quite popular. And uh, I wasn't quite intrigued by this one, and I've come back to it several times now and done a long play. Um, so it's obviously grabbed me. Staying power, I understand, being quite a low score. I think once you've completed the 15 screens, there's not much to bring you back to the game. But that was a problem present in the original um, Hunchback uh, conversion. Barrels to avoid there. Very nearly got wiped out at the end there. That was a bit risky. So yeah, bouncing barrels again. That wasn't in Hunchback. Nor was there any falling boulders. So at least here, they've gone a, a little, little bit further. They've added in some new things. And uh, I think this is a worthy contender against the official Hunchback conversion. So yeah, I mean, it's not great. I think it's, the problem is that the poor sprite movement and slightly sluggish controls. I actually kind of find found this easier to control than the original Hunchback. Um, although his jump is weird, it's, it's much it's, it's a much longer jump he does um, than the uh, original game. Um, we've got disappearing and reappearing platforms. Look, it just flashes there and disappears. If you're on them, when it just slightly disappeared there, you would fall to your doom. And here we are already on the final screen, and there is Esmeralda. And whatever you do, do not jump into Esmeralda, because you actually she actually kills you. You actually lose a life for that. Let's take the time with the barrel there. And here we go. Essentially, we've completed the game. And what do we get? <laughs> actually get an ending scene that's relatively okay picture very colorful and a jingle of music that's one thing again the original hunchback game didn't have it didn't have uh, an ending uh, of course the game loops uh, hunchback did loop of course it's a little bit harder now you can see the time limit is really going down really quick you run out of bells you get struck by lightning which is another actually quite nice touch so, I'm just going to show you here um, me dying, uh, and then we'll get to the high score table. 
But yeah, um, what do I think to this game then? I was pleasantly surprised. You have to bear in mind... Ah! <laughs> yeah, you have to bear in mind... Arg. Uh, you have to bear in mind this is a budget game. This was £1.99 uh, back in 1986. And I don't think you would have been too unhappy with it at that price, personally. Arg. And, yeah, I, I don't think this is too bad at all. Um... I don't think it's brilliant, but I don't think it deserves that horrendously low rating of 26%. I think this might deserve... I'm going to give this 5.5 out of 10. Because once you've done the 15 screens, you're pretty much done with it. Uh, uh, the poor sprite movement and the sluggish controls um, are a, a real shame. But I don't think this deserves to be in like the bottom... 30 games of all time in Amsterdam Action Magazine or whatever. So, yes, there you go, guys. I'm going to give this 5.5 out of 10. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What score would you give this game? And uh, would you have mind having this with your pocket money back in 1986 or 1.99? Anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. Take care and see you all again soon. Goodbye. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that, if you did please click a like below, leave a comment and also subscribe if you haven't already, and over that way there's another video for you to check out, Zypho out.